I started this project so many months ago, but then we got really busy finishing the bus, moving out of our house, having a gigantic yard sale, and moving into the bus. So this project got put by the wayside. It actually got put in the storage shed. A couple of the mugs got broken off. I had to put them back on. But now, today, I'm finally ready to finish this broken mug mosaic, and I'm going to show you how I do it. There's a little bit of a backstory on why I was ever doing a project like this in the first place. We were building our bus, so we were watching other YouTube channels of other bus builds, and I saw a lady do a broken tile mosaic in their shower on their bus build, and I was like, yes, I want to do that. But I couldn't find ceramic tile in the colors that I wanted to use in my mo mosaic. All I was finding was stone tile in varying shades of brown. <laughs> that was boring. So I thought, well, ceramic tile, ceramic plates, sounds like the same thing, maybe it would work. So in the process of looking at other mosaics online, I saw pictures of other teacup and coffee mug mosaics, like with plants growing in them. I couldn't really find any specific instructions on how to do it, so I had to just figure it out for myself. And this was the way that I was going to practice to see if this method would work on the shower that I wanted to build in our bus. And, um, after it did work on the broken mug mosaics, I did do it in our shower too, as most of you have probably already seen. Now, obviously, I'm already halfway through with this project, but I do have some old footage of the first few steps of making this, so I'm just going to kind of back up and walk you through everything that I did from the beginning up until now, and then I'm going to finish the project on film today. Well, not in one day, but it'll be in one day for you guys. <laughs> Step number one is that you want to pick out your mugs or teacups or whatever you're going to use in your project. I like to go shopping at thrift stores and find several mugs or cups in kind of coordinated colors that I think look cute together. Like this is what I ended up with for this mosaic. And then the next thing you want to do is pick out some colored plates in colors that coordinate with the cups that you're going to use in your mosaic because I'm going to show you how to break these plates into small little mosaic tiles that you will use in your mosaic. Step number two is that you want to choose a board to be your backboard for your project in the size and shape that you want your finished project to be. I use half inch plywood as my backer board, which seems to work perfect for these projects. And using plywood makes it easy to screw in some hangers to attach to the back so that you can hang it on your wall. Now, originally, I wanted all five of these mugs to be in a straight line across a slightly longer board, like in some other projects I've done, but that board wasn't going to fit in our bus. There's only one place it will fit, and it had to be this short to fit there. So I had to kind of scrunch all my mugs together like this and make it look kind of crazy and silly. But um, it's going to work fine for my project because I'm not going to be actually growing plants in this mosaic. I'm using it as an organizer that will hang on the kitchen wall. Once you have your cups and your plates and your board cut to size, the next step is to actually cut the mugs in half and then get ready to thin set them onto the board. So this is where I have some old footage to show you from back when we still lived at our house and I was sawing these mugs in, in half and uh, adhering them to the board with thin set mortar. So I'll show you some of those clips and try to walk you through it and catch you up to where I am in the project right now. I was going to show you my process of how I make my teacup and coffee mug mosaics, but I forgot to turn the camera on and I already got started cutting my mugs in half. So I thought I would show you on the last one how I do that. I actually already started my first cut on the last mug for this mosaic. Um, but I thought I would at least show you that this is what I do first. I set the coffee mug down onto my saw and I just run it through the saw blade straight like this. Here, I'll show you. 
I start by looking down on the top of my mug and knowing which part I want to saw off and whether I want it to be straight and parallel with the handle or I want it to be at an angle with the handle sticking out. This one I wanted to be at an angle so I started making my cut across the bottom down here this way. And you can see how it just, I just run it through the saw blade like this. And then it gets complicated and you have to start turning the mug on its side for the rest of the cuts. So let me get my earplugs back in and I'll show you how we do this. Here's what's going on in my project. Mike cut a board for me the size I needed and I've traced all the coffee mugs on roughly. They don't have to be pretty. They just need roughly traced on. Okay, here we go. I do want to point out a minor mistake that I made on this project. Like I told you before, um, during the moving process, some of the mugs got broken off, and so I had to re-thin set them back on again. And normally, when I'm done adhering a mug with thin set, I take my finger and wipe the excess thin set off, like I did on the bottom of this mug. On the bottom of this mug, I did not wipe the excess thin set off. There's way too much bulky thin set still there in the way. And that's gonna be a problem when we try to put our tiles on because the tiles won't be able to go very close to the mug. I like my tiles to be a little bit closer than that. So I'm actually gonna chip away some of this excess thin set being very careful not to break the whole mug off the thing again. So I'm just going to try using a screwdriver to very carefully chip this away. Oh yeah, that's actually working really easy. Oh. Well, you guys, it didn't work. I wasn't careful enough. I broke one of the mugs off of the board with the thin set still attached to it. So I want to take this moment to point out that thin set was never made to adhere to wood. Thin set was made to adhere to rock board, which is what you would use behind your shower walls. So just using it, using thin set on a board is very imperfect and I think it's okay for craft projects, but you would never use wood in a project where water could get introduced to it through cracks in the grout because then wood is an organic material and it would start to decay away. But in my project, it's never gonna be introduced to water. So it's fine for me to just thin set it on, but the problem is I keep waiting too long after thin setting and it just gets dry and brittle. So I'm going to thin set this one mug back into place today and move on with the project and hopefully everything goes according to plan for the rest of the time. 
we suffered a few more casualties you guys i broke three mugs off the project again so i have to stick them back on again but i have never had this problem before in all of the broken teacup and broken coffee mug mosaics that i've made i've used thin set every single time and never had a mug break off until now until you know weeks and weeks have gone by and i think the thin set gets more dry and more brittle as time goes by and they're easier to break off so chipping off the excess thin set with a screwdriver was a very very bad idea because that's what sometimes just caused the thin set to crack and break the whole mug off so i have to make sure i remember this time to wipe the excess thin set off from around the edges of the mugs so that the tiles will fit more closely. I mixed up a little thin set here in just an old container, something that I can throw away when I'm done. And there's never any accurate measurements for mixing up a small batch of thin set. They only give you the directions for mixing up the whole enormous bag of thin set. So you just kind of have to get the right consistency of water and thin set if that's what you're going to use. Okay, so we're just going to start globbing out some thin set here spreading it around the shape and size we need for these mugs, which I have a good guide to go by because of the thin set that was already on the wood before. I want to make sure I get it thick enough this time that the mug really sinks down into the thin set and gets good adhesion. Okay, so I'm just going to stick this down in here just like this. Wiping that excess away from this edge so that I can get the tiles all the way in where I want them to be. Okay, so we've chosen our cups for the project, we've cut our board and waterproofed it, we've sawed our cups in half, and we have adhered our cups onto the board. Now we're ready to use our plates and break them into the small mosaic tiles that you'll use to complete the project. There are two very inexpensive tools that I use to break my plates into mosaic tiles. The first is a pair of tile nippers and you'll use these sideways on the edge of a plate like this. The second is a pair of wheeled glass cutters and you use them straight against the edge of the plate, like this. You bite into the side of the plate with your tile nippers, and then squeeze down with even pressure. Ah, this one didn't break how I like it to break. This one broke off the edge, and it's probably because I wasn't really paying attention to how my pliers were placed on the edge of the plate. And this should break straight across. So both tools work. Sometimes one works better than another, and sometimes you don't know until you just try it. But now that the plate is already broken, I'll probably go back to using my tile nippers again. And it makes nice break, straight breaks most of the time too. This plate, however, is not ceramic. It is actually glass. This is actually called milk glass. So I would not use my tile nippers for this plate at all because they may cause the glass to just crush and shatter. I would definitely use the wheeled glass cutters on this glass plate and save my tile nippers for these ceramic plates. Back to this little orange plate. I'm just going to keep breaking it until I get the size of pieces that I'm looking for. That's a pretty good size. It's more rectangular than square, so I'm going to keep going and see what other shapes I get. That guy's a little more square, but with a funky trapezoid shape. So here's what it should look like to break a plate with a pair of tile nippers. Tink! Just like that. I paid more attention to the placement of my biters on the edge of the plate that time. And again, over here, keeping them nice and straight, going about half to maybe two thirds in, and it breaks nice and straight and easy. Side note here, I typically use a cardboard box when I'm breaking plates and I hold the plate kind of down into the box 
while I'm breaking it and this prevents shrapnel from flying out to the sides all around your house and also the broken shards will fall down into the box so it makes for much easier cleanup. The only reason I'm not using the cardboard box today is it's getting in the way while I'm trying to film so I'm probably going to be vacuuming up ceramic and glass shrapnel from all around my house when I'm done with this today. Take my word, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, once you have all your mosaic tiles laid out for your project just the way you want them, the next step is to adhere the pieces to the backboard. And there are several different products you can use to stick your mosaic pieces down. If you have a big bag of Thinset, you can just continue using more Thinset. Or if you're using the pre-mixed um, grout adhesive mixture, you can continue using that. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and use um, a mastic adhesive just because we're living in a bus and Thinset takes a lot of water to clean up and we're trying to conserve our water. So it's easier for me to just open up a tub of mastic and use a popsicle stick to spread it on. And then, you know, I just keep, put the lid back on and keep the container. This one came from Ace Hardware and the label just says ready set. And then under that, it says pre-mixed mastic adhesive. I'm going to be working one small section at a time. I'll remove all the pieces in that section, but keep them in the same layout. And then one by one, I'm going to butter the back of each piece and stick it back in place so I have every piece placed precisely how I want it to let it dry and harden. It's super relaxing, you guys. This is the best hobby. It's super zen and totally chill. Just sitting here, you know, breaking things and sticking them down. <laughs> okay, I think I got all the pieces on. There's one more little detailed step I like to complete before I grout my project, and that is around the edge of the plywood. I don't trust that the grout will stay stuck around the edge of the plywood unless there's something to help it stay stuck there. So I like to make some very small little mosaic tiles out of mirror. I cut the mirror into half inch wide strips because the plywood is a half inch wide. And then I cut those strips into one inch long tiles. And I glue those tiles all the way along the edge of all four sides. And then that gives the grout something to hang on to when I get to that step next. To cut the glass, I just used an inexpensive glass cutter. And then I also used this little tool. I forget what it's called but it just breaks the glass exactly on the line you cut. And all of these tools will be in the description below our video. There's a little line right on the top of these pliers and you line up that line with the line you just cut of your glass and give a little squeeze and it just breaks it just like that. Isn't that neat? This is actually fun for me to do. I think these tools are cool and I like using them. So I'm just gonna repeat this process and keep making some half inch strips, 
cutting them into one inch pieces until I have enough to go all the way around the whole project. Okay, here we go. Oh, some of them have already broken. <laughs> that was fast. There we go. That's how quick and easy it is to make mirror tiles. I didn't finish the mirror portion of the project last night. You guys, for some reason, it gets really exhausting when you're trying to work on something and film at the same time. Like, I guess it's mentally exhausting or something. But anyway, I had to call it quits and just start fresh again on it today. I've cut some more pieces of mirror and I'm setting them up around all the edges just to see if I have enough or if I'm going to have to cut some more. For this next step, which I think is number eight, it can get a little messy because we're going to be gluing those little mirror tiles onto the edges of the board. And it's messy with thin set, it's messy with mastic. So I put down a double layer of protection on the dinette tabletop. First I put down a layer of aluminum foil and then I put down a layer of wax paper and taped it down just to be safe because I'm going to be using liquid nails to glue the mirrors on, which it says right on the package works best on wood, wall tile, and concrete, and it also lists ceramics on the back. So this is probably a really good project product to use for the whole project. And it has this nice pointed tip, so I'll be able to get it onto the mirrors nicely and more neatly than the other products, I think. Okay, I'm trying this for the first time, and I cut the tip of this pretty small, so we'll see. Oh, that seems pretty easy to work with. I want it to squish out a little bit, but I want it I don't want it to squish out the bottom edge where it will glue itself onto the surface underneath it. So let me try this and see how it works. Okay, that seemed like really about the right amount. A tiny bit squished out. Hmm. Try another one. Now, the ones on the corner, I pressed completely down hard all the way, but the rest of these, as I go, I'm just going to press them on very lightly. So um, as I get all the rest of the pieces on the whole front edge of the board, I can come back and maybe reposition the spacing on them as needed. Once I get the spacing right, then I can press them all in tightly against the board. Okay, I've got the spacing pretty even, so I'm just going through and pressing each piece on more tightly. Seriously, I could have used this liquid nails in a tube for the whole entire project. This thing worked great. Now all we have to do is wait for it to dry and then we can grout. While we're waiting for the glue to dry, I'll show you the shower mosaic that I tiled entirely out of broken dishes, which is what I was practicing for with all these broken mug and teacup mosaics. So I know some of you have already seen this, but for anybody who's new or has missed the shower mosaic, this is the crazy thing that I built while Mike was building the rest of the whole bus. <laughs> It took me that long. <laughs> so there's my little turtle, and there's other creatures down here, and there's a puffer fish, and um, a coral reef over here. Oh yeah, and this little guy down here in the front. So that's what I was practicing for with all these little craft projects. I just had some seriously bad luck, you guys. The GoPro that I have been using on this whole project just fell right on my broken mug mosaic and broke one of the mugs off of the project. So, I mean, the mug itself isn't broken, so I'm just gonna have to glue it back on again. I'm just telling you, I'm not going to film this part of the process so no cameras can cause any more damage. <laughs> I'm just going to repeat the same step that you've seen previously and get this back together so I can get on with grouting the project. Hey, guess who came home, you guys? 
And guess what he's fixing for me right now? Oh, Miss Margarita. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Delicious. Mexico. You forgot salt on my glass. Oh, I did. You want some salt? Too late now. Maybe on the next mm. one. Delish. They are delish. I can't believe I'm about to grout a project inside the bus. <laughs> this is so messy. Normally back home, well before we moved into the bus, I would grout a project outside on my front patio. But I don't have a patio here. I don't have a table to set up outside or anything. The only flat space I have to work on is the dinette tabletop in the bus. So I'm just putting down a drop cloth. We're finally on step nine, grouting the project. So I have a little bucket container here for mixing up the grout and something to stir it and spread it with and a sponge for wiping it down. There's plenty of videos you can look at online for more instructions on how to do the actual grouting procedure. I'm not gonna go into detail on that here. I'm just gonna show you how I do it. But with grout, it's the same as with Thinset. The package instructions just tell you how to mix up the whole entire package. They don't give you any measurements for mixing up smaller amounts. But when you watch other videos, they all say to go by consistency, that you're looking for a smooth peanut buttery consistency. So that's what we're going for. And you get better with time as you go along, but you always want to start by putting your water in your container first and then add the powdered grout to that and keep stirring until you get the right consistency. Don't worry you guys, my second margarita did have salt on the rim. Oops, I had a leak. It's time to glove up and get our grout on. Here we go. That looks messy. It is messy. Okay, I just had to turn the project around and I had the camera off, but it's upside down now because I had to be able to reach inside the mugs to put the grout all the way in the back. This is a kind of tedious part of the process where you really want to make sure that every little gap and every nook and cranny is completely filled with grout and then you start pulling the excess grout off the project and then I can't remember what the package instructions say because I had my grout in a Ziploc bag to bring it to the bus but it's either like 20 minutes or 20 to 30 minutes. The next step in the grouting process is to wipe it down with a lightly damp sponge and I have cut my grouting sponge down to smaller sizes to fit underneath the handles and things and the key here is not to get your project too wet. You want to squeeze out as much water as you possibly can and then very lightly and quickly go over the surface and that's it. Don't spend much time with your sponge because you don't want to re-wet the grout too much. Okay, after wiping with the sponge, I'm gonna give it a few minutes to set up again, and then I'm gonna start rubbing the whole thing down with a dry t-shirt, and then our project will be done. Right now, I have some cleanup to do. The dry t-shirt part is probably the best part of the whole project. It's because it's when you get the big reveal of how your finished product is gonna look. Just 
go and knock your cup off, for God's sakes. I wrapped the t-shirt around the popsicle stick to get underneath the handle. You have to kind of dig the extra grout out of the cups and get it smoothed out and cleaned out as best you can and get all of the remaining grout haze off the cups and the tile pieces and everything you can because it will continue to harden as it dries and eventually you won't be able to get it off at all. So really take the time with your dry t-shirt and get all of that grout haze off of everything. Okay you guys, the grout has hardened and the project is almost complete and I'm loving the way it looks, but I do have a word of warning that I forgot to mention yesterday and this is really important. The one thing you don't want to do is use your fingers to pick up your project or set down your project like this because even gentle pressure from your fingertips um, on the grout between these mirrors will break and crumble the grout out from between the, the mirrors. And sometimes it even breaks the grout out on this whole line up here. Sometimes you think it's a catastrophe. But if that does happen, don't panic. Don't throw your whole project away. All you have to do is mix up a new small batch of grout and while you're waiting the five minutes for it to slake, mist down the part that you need to repair, the crumbled away part, and let that water sit there for a few minutes. Blot it away with a paper towel and then use the grout to patch whatever crumbled away and just refill it in with grout. Follow the same steps that you followed before. But the reason why you need to get it wet first is because the dry grout will absorb too much moisture out of the new wet grout and cause it to be too brittle. So make sure you um, wet that area down first. Okay, here's the important part. The way you want to lift this is make sure that you always set your project down on a towel or drop cloth while you're working on it so that you can pick it up like this. Actually, I get it closer like this so I can stick my hand underneath and then you can grab it like this. And never let your hands come around here onto the mirrors where it can crumble the grout. You just want to be very careful picking up and turning your project over like this so you can now work on the back of it. What I like to do, especially if it's a project I'm going to sell, is use uh, decoupage and craft paper all over the back of the whole project, all the way to the edge of the mirrors, so it totally protects the edges of the mirrors all the way around. It's not a complicated step. It's something I enjoy doing, so I like to do it, but I think I think that there's another way you could do it more quickly and easily just by using tape. If you just run a strip of tape along every edge of this that goes all the way to the outside edge of the mirrors but that you can't see, then it would protect those mirrors and those grout from getting like bumped or chipped off. For my process, I use masking tape just to tape off the fronts of the mirrors so the decoupage doesn't drip off and mess up my pretty little mirrors. This is Mod Podge, which you can buy at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels. You can buy it anywhere. I'm just going to paint it on with a paintbrush and then stick my paper onto, onto it. This is pretty basic, you guys. Oh, I haven't cut my paper yet. Crap. This is going to dry. So I don't have bits of color sticking out and showing. Okay, I'm sticking it on. I didn't have enough of the yellow polka dot paper. I had to go with another color. So that's all I'm doing is creating this barrier around the edges by sticking the paper on the whole back. And then it looks nice and finished too. have to work fast because the wood absorbs all the moisture out of your glue. Better push down those other corners. 
it just got Mod Podge all over my shirt, so I had to change. But I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off of this before the glue dries to the tape because we don't want that to happen. And you want to peel your tape straight back away from the mirrors. You don't want to pull it like this because that wants to pull the mirrors away. You pull it like this so it doesn't put any uh, pulling pressure on the mirrors. Oh my gosh, you guys, we're on to the final step. I think this is step 11. It's time to put the hangers on the back. And I let Mike do this for me because he's my He-Man. That's right. Are you just using those other ones as spacers? Yeah, I'm just spacing out. So what I'm doing, I'm just making a dent right in the center of this. And the reason is, is we don't want to move these things. These need to be right. These are called keyhole hangers. You don't have to use this kind. We're using this kind because we're hanging it up in a bus and it's going to be bumping down the road. So we need something that is going to really stay put and stay in place. Yeah. So you just poked a hole with the screwdriver first so mm -hmm. you could get it centered. Yeah. So here it is. This is my finished product about to go up on the wall. What do you guys think? I know it's kind of crazy the way they're all jumbled up really tight together, but that's the only way it would fit on our wall. So it's time to hang it up. Master Mike is at work measuring. Oh, Master Mike measures my mosaic. Master Mike measures for my mug mosaic. <laughs> The thing is, with a schoolie, it's very common not to have a bathroom sink just because you save on the space and all the plumbing costs and everything, and just to use your kitchen sink as your bathroom sink too. But we find that the items we use every single day end up just staying on the counter in here, and it drives me crazy. So I'm putting away our toothbrush, our toothpaste, my face wash, my face lotion, my little makeup items. That was the whole point of making this organizer in the first place. I, I finally made um, a broken mug mosaic to keep. Every single one that I've made so far, I have given away or sold. This is the first one I've made for myself. It's about time, right? I'm super pleased. I'm super excited. <laughs> the whole nine yards, everything. <laughs>